They phoned me up yet again in 90, beginning of 1975 um, and said, you know, we're going to do a small UK tour, a, a one week Spanish tour, and then six weeks in America. And just hearing the word America sort of pricked my ears up. Um, and that was it. First rehearsal was in a scout hut in Birmingham. Um, pro I think it was February 75, um, might have been March. Um, doing the songs from El Dorado and on the third day. But of course, what I hadn't got prepared for just sitting there doing these rehearsals was that when we actually went on stage, you know, it was a case of we were supposed to be doing other things other than just playing the music, you know. Hugh got up and twirled his cello around and then they handed me this device. It was a cello that was actually an exploding cello. It had a, a charge inside and, and you, you pretended to play it and then press this button on the floor and the whole cello would just explode with a big bang and cloud of smoke and that was supposed to be part of the act and you know and, and I, I, I'd never even thought of doing anything like this but this was showbiz I suppose. I think we played the Valentine's Day dance at Newcastle Polytechnic and, and there were about um, five men and a dog in the audience and seven of us on stage and it was pretty dire and we really used it as a bit of a rehearsal. Uh, in fact we, we used the next half a dozen gigs as a bit of a rehearsal really before we went to America. And I think during that period, that, 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 those first few weeks with the band, I really thought I'd made a huge mistake and was looking for, almost looking there and then for a way out of it to get back to doing what I was doing before. But then I thought, no, you know, I've agreed to do America, so I'll do America, get that out of the way and then leave. Um, but I enjoyed going around America. That was actually a, a good trip. I, I got to see a lot of places that I'd never ever been to or thought of going to. Yeah, got back to Britain, having already phoned a few fixers up to say I'm coming back in a week or so's time. Is there any work going? What, what have you got? Blah, blah, blah. Got off the plane and went, bye guys, it's been an experience, thanks very much, I'm off. <laughs> and they said, no, you're not. You, you know, what do you mean you're off? I said, well, I'm working next week, I've got a few sessions and whatever, but no, 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 we start rehearsals for, for Europe or, yeah, I think it was Europe and then back to the States in a few weeks time. And? I said, well, you're in the band, am I? I, I honestly had no idea that I was considered to be in the band. I thought I was just booked to do that tour. It was all so loosely organized. No one had actually come up and said, look, this is what you'll get on the next tour. This is what we're paying. This is where you're gonna be staying, what you're gonna be doing. It, none of that happened. It was just a case of, uh, oh no, you're in the band. Whatever we do now, you're doing. That the hardest tour we ever did was um, 67 concerts in 76 days around America and I think Canada as well. And, and that was hard work. Anyone who says that it's glamorous doesn't know what they're talking about. It was just, you know, hotel, travel, sound check, eat, do the gig, hotel, travel, sound check, do the gig. And it was non-stop just non-stop. So as far as Jeff was concerned, tours were just a bit of a necessary evil to sell his albums. I don't think he ever enjoyed touring as far as I'm aware. You know, we, we were, the, I think, the first act to use such a, a big laser light show as we did. I mean, I, I've still got press clippings from, I think, 1977, 78, where we played um, Universal Amphitheatre in Los Angeles and um, the lasers were reported by aircraft coming in to land at LAX as UFOs and they'd never seen anything like it. We were bouncing lasers right across the San Fernando Valley and off of mirrors and then shooting it all up into the sky and this sort of thing. And, and it made front page news in, in the Los Angeles Times and you know, I mean, that's how big it was at the time to have green lasers. Uh, we, we did a, we had a reception um, where w when we were playing at Anaheim Stadium um, and they, they, they put up this big tent, uh, which was a, a sort of casino come restaurant for the night and invited all the, all the record royalty from the West Coast to come down for the show and so on. And apparently Sharon, um, 
requested of the caterers um, that she wanted uh, all of the napkins on the tables and the tablecloths to have ELO on them. So it was all monogrammed, you know. And that was all fine. But on the night when we actually turned up, rather than that, what we actually had were yellow tablecloths and yellow napkins because the person who took the message had mistaken ELO for yellow. <laughs>